the fear and possibly the pain of being rejected definitely um, is worth the love and the fulfillment that you'll find in being yourself. My voice is powerful, and the voices of other women are powerful. Our voices could literally change the world. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. We're talking sex, dating, and HIV today, and I'm joined by two fantastic TikTok influencer guests. I've got Nathaniel Holly here and Bianca Ordonez. Good to see you both. Thanks for making the time. Of course. Thank you for having me, Carl. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's dive straight into this. You know, Bianca, on one of your TikTok videos, um, you asked the question, is it hard dating being HIV positive? The answer is a cold-blooded yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> care, to, care to elaborate? Absolutely. Um, and I do elaborate um, in that TikTok. You do. So um, it is hard dating, and it's not because of HIV solely. In my personal experience, and I know that everyone's experience is entirely different, but for me, dating has always been hard. I have I wear my heart on my sleeve, so it was never easy. But once I was diagnosed with HIV, it actually became easier and better. Coming forward and disclosing my status really helps me um, decide or determine, and, and also people really show their true colors, whether or not they want to be involved with the person that's HIV positive. So for me, it definitely helped me not waste my time. What's your take on this, Nathaniel? I would agree with her wholeheartedly. Um, you know, dating has always not necessarily been the best or the easiest. I don't necessarily think in the social media age, anybody would find it and say it's easy because there's so many options and opportunities. But um, when I did um, start to come out as HIV positive and dating, it changed the landscape because I automatically showed up day one as myself. And I think that in other auspices, I may have showed up as a version of myself. You know, nowadays, you know, I've disclosed openly and honestly for the last, what, 10 years, and it has made um, dating a lot easier for me. Yeah, I think you make an interesting point there because, you know, when we come to terms with being able to say out loud, I'm living with HIV, which is a journey in of itself for anyone who receives that diagnosis with internalized stigma and stuff, but when you are sort of sitting there going, look, I'm HIV positive, you kind of, to your point, Nathaniel, you are being so authentically you. It helps you weed through the nonsense very quickly. Um, you know, and that's one reason why I always encourage people to disclose. But I also know that there are scenarios where it may not, may not work best. There's one other quote that I liked from one of your TikTok videos, Bianca. Um, it, actually, it's the same video. You said one of the things is, uh, one of the things to being able to date while you're HIV positive is to love yourself. Um, now, mm -hmm. that's sometimes easier said than done with stigma. How was it that you learned to love yourself with your HIV? Oh, well, you mentioned it. It was a journey. There was definitely a lot of self-internalized uh, stigma. And it, I guess it, it really was a point of that everything that I am or everything that I thought I was before I was diagnosed with HIV really didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. All the things that I attached to my identity, um, at the end of the day, when faced with such a diagnosis, really doesn't matter. So what actually matters? And that is something that I tried to focus on most when I was, I guess, rebuilding myself as the person that I wanted to show up as in the world. And one of the things for me that I had to accept personally was my faith that God still loved me, even though society might say that it was so sinful and disgusting. And I mean, I'm sure everyone has experienced, you both have experienced what it's like to, to be on the receiving end of stigma and fear. But that was the thing for me that I am still so heavily loved by God, that even if no one else loves me ever again in this life, God still loves me. And that is enough for me. Let's talk about condoms for them, against them, and why your opinion? I'll start with you, Bianca. <laughs> um, I no condoms. I've been in a relationship for almost five years now. We have a beautiful daughter together and hopefully, God willing, having a few more babies. So it's a no for me. Nathaniel? Yeah, I've never been a fan of condoms. Um, and <laughs> I, just, I just have, I've used them, but I've never been a fan. For a lot of people, condoms are not a thing. I mean, if condoms have been around 
forever. <laughs> and STIs and STDs have not changed. Right. Um, the rates of, of HIV has not changed based on condoms being in the, in, the, in the medical sphere. So that means we just have to find other ways and other tools to really be able to bring down the, the, the rates of HIV and the rates of other STIs and transmission. And honestly, U equals U is really an empowering message because it allows anyone who's living with HIV to say like, no, I'm not different. I am not different. And that is a game changer in terms of how we see ourselves and allows us to show up differently because it's like, no, if I'm on, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, then I am no different. And so that, that means I should not be subjected to prejudice, to judgment, to stigma, or any of these other things. And so it allows you to peel back some of the layers. And I think that the more we can empower the people that are living with HIV to, to tackle onto that, the community can kind of gauge more on it as well, because a lot of people hide in the shadows um, that are living with HIV. I think, you know, just in Texas here, we have over 90,000 90, people living with HIV. I can count on my hands how many advocates that are out here that are public. And so I think that the more we can kind of empower our communities, we can kind of like peel back some of those layers. Yeah, Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. and U equals U is such a, a strong and, and great message that more and more people need to hear and, and understand, and more importantly, believe. Uh, Bianca, in the few moments we've got left, you've said in one of your videos, if you're HIV positive and ready to find love, love is ready to find you what are your final words of encouragement to folks who may be teetering on the edge of whether to put themselves out there i think that if you are hiv positive and you're ready to put yourself out there and start dating again the fear and possibly the pain of being rejected definitely um is worth the love and the fulfillment that you'll find in being yourself. Um, being HIV positive, you know how ostracizing it could be, how isolated you can feel. And so um, being brave and courageous and vulnerable can be extremely scary, but it's not worse than being lonely and feeling like a fraud in your own skin amongst your own loved ones. So I would definitely say, go ahead, do it be fearless, be bold, maybe be rejected. And that is okay. You will be fine. And there will be someone that loves you exactly for who you are. Nathaniel, you were nodding vigorously. Yeah, I agree whole, wholeheartedly. Um, and you know, one thing that I tell anyone who is thinking about um, coming into that next season of their diagnosis is go to therapy. Go to counseling, go talk to someone, um, go peel back the layers of some of the trauma that you experienced before you were living with HIV. So that as you venture out into this new wave of who you are, you don't bring that level of trauma into this because you will, you know, come against some some hardship. And I want you to be prepared for that. And, um, you know, to, to Bianca's point, I think that when you come into it loving yourself, it kind of repels a lot of the fear because I'm not walking away any less than the way when I came in with because I've already filled up my cup. Nathaniel, Bianca, thank you so much for your time. This has been fun and, and really great chatting with you. And also, just thank you for all the great work you both do separately um, out there in social media and on TikTok. Nathaniel Holly, official on TikTok, and Bianca.Ordonez. Thank you both for your time, and, and I invite you back to have more of these chats with me um, anytime you're free. Of course, thank, thank you. you for having me. That's going to do it for this episode of Plus Talk, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you want more information, you can check out our website, pluslifemedia.com. And we are across all your favorite social platforms at Plus Life Media. Until next time, be nice to one another. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.